Hello everyone and welcome back to Corndog Creates. In this video I'm going to be showing you how I made this labyrinth diorama with some cheap and easy products to get a hold of and some D&D miniatures that I found at a local gaming shop. To begin with I measured some foam board that I got from the Dollar Tree to fit the top of a painting panel that I also got from the Dollar Tree and cut it to fit the top. Then I peeled off the paper covering the foam board and glued it down to the wood panel. Next I measured and cut three pieces to the same size and glued them together to make the wall for the back of the labyrinth. They ended up being a little longer than I wanted so I just cut them a little shorter. Then I measured some more pieces to make up the walls on the sides and the front of the labyrinth and glued those together as well. Then I glued those to the base to make a rectangular box. I wasn't too worried about how they look as long as the shape was right because I'll be fixing it later. Once the base shape was finished, I cut some smaller pieces to make up the inner walls of the labyrinth, glued them together, and then glued them into place inside to make a small corridor area. Now that the walls are finished, it's time to make them look like they're covered in stone. I took the scrap pieces that were left over from making the walls and cut them into small strips. Then I firmly pressed the balled up piece of aluminum foil hard against the foam to imprint the texture into it. Then I used some scissors to cut the strips into the rough shape of stones. I want the back wall to be more uniform, so this first batch of stones will all be rectangular. Once they were all cut, I grabbed a Tupperware container that I put some rocks in, put all the pieces into the container, and gave it a good shake for about a minute or two. What I get in the end are smoother edges and some extra texture added to make them look more like stones. Next I wanted to simulate stone pillars for a door on the back wall. So I used the aluminum foil to add texture to another piece of foam and cut it into a couple pieces to the size that I needed. Now that everything was cut for this wall, it was time to start gluing everything on. The first thing I wanted to glue on were the pillar pieces so that I would have a guide for where to put my stone pieces. After those were glued down, it was time to put on the stones. The remaining three walls I wanted to look like they were put together with whatever stones that could be found, so I cut them into different shapes and sizes, gave them a tumble inside my rock container, and jumped right into the next stone laying montage. Enjoy the music and try to count how many pieces I had to cut to finish every wall. Now that all of the stones were on the walls, I needed to fill in the gaps, so I decided to use some spackle. This particular kind starts pink and dries white, so that would be helpful to see where I need to add more. I started off using my fingers to add the spackle, but I eventually realized I had a smoothing tool that would work better and make less of a mess, so I switched to using that. It made a huge difference because I could just slap some spackle onto the wall and scrape it across the fill-in gaps and clean off the stones at the same time. And then I just rinsed and repeated on every wall. My only issue with this process was that the spackle mostly covered up the texture I added to the foam with the tumbler and the aluminum foil. But the spackle has a rough stone like texture so I wasn't too upset about it and it didn't make much of a difference in the end. To give the whole piece a bit of protection from the spray paint primer I plan to use later and to give the props I plan to use something else to stick to. I made a mixture of Mod Podge and black paint and gave the whole thing a quick coat. Next I wanted to make the stairs leading up to the door on the back wall, so I grabbed these wooden sticks that I found at Walmart that were the perfect size, a rasping tool, and used it to rough up the sticks. I'm going to put how to spell this tool on the screen because it took me a while to figure it out. 
This tool has little teeth on it and basically shreds this wood pretty easily to add texture. Once I had them all textured, I cut them down to the sizes that I needed, glued together the two main pieces, and then glued those two pieces together to make the full stair structure. I didn't realize it until way later that these stairs were way bigger than they should have been, but I'm not too worried about it. This is my first diorama, so I'm doing everything for the first time. After the stairs were finished, I was able to move on to the beams making up the door on the back wall. All I had to do was texture a couple more pieces of wood and glue them into the gap. I wasn't worried about how much was showing or what the bottom looked like because it was going to be covered by the stairs. Next I took some thinner foam from a children's craft kit and cut two small pieces to add to the door to simulate metal strips and glued them to the top and bottom of the door. Next I took a paper clip and snipped a small piece off and bent each end to a 90 degree angle. I also cut a small piece of wood to add to it to make the handle for my door. Then I glued it in place. Next I wanted to add studs to the metal on the door so I grabbed my smallest hole punch and went ham on this piece of plastic. I'm not sure what it came from, but it's a little thicker than paper, so it's the perfect material for what I need. Then I just added one for each piece of wood on each metal band. The one thing that I did to this diorama that I wasn't too happy with was this part right here. I added some glue and sand to the bottom to try and simulate a sandy texture to the ground, but it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to be. Something I meant to do earlier that I forgot to do before I painted the Mod Podge and paint on was to cut some pieces off of the wall to make it look like some parts have crumbled and fallen away. I also took some of the scrap foam from when I was cutting the stones and spread them around the base where I made the cuts to look like rubble. I also made sure to add some glue to the parts that were cut out so that they were protected from spray paint. Here's where I decided to fix the ground area that I wasn't happy with. I took an even mix of spackle and Mod Podge and mixed it together with some black paint. Then I added some sand to the mixture to give it the grainy look I wanted. Once everything was mixed really well, I painted the mixture onto the base of the diorama, making sure to cover as much as I could without too much care, even going around the outside and the back of the structure. Next I took all of the minis and gave them a coat of black paint and then a small spray of gray paint from the top, but I don't think the gray made much of a difference with the kind of paint that I used. Maybe if I had used some contrast paints or something it would have shown through more, but cheap Walmart paints don't work the same. Then I took some burnt umber and king's gold and mixed them together to make a yellowish brown color for the chests. After adding a couple thin layers, I used some gold and black paint for the details, specifically black for the metal bands and gold for the hinges, locks, and handles of the chests. For the Minotaur, I mixed Beachcomber Beige and Territorial Beige to give his skin a tannish white color because I wanted him to actually look half human. Then I used Nutmeg Brown for his bracers, his belt, and the handle of his mace. Next I used an antique parchment color for his horns and his hooves. I also went back and added color to his face, which I missed earlier, and used the burnt umber for his mane and the hair above his hooves. And then I took some silver paint and used it for his mace. Lastly, to add some color to his outfit, I used some Admiral Blue for his kilt, sash, I'm not sure what this thing would be called. You guys let me know in the comments section. For the two soldiers, I'll be using mostly the same colors. First using the silver from earlier to paint their swords, their chainmail, and the outer edges of their shields. Next the parchment for their faces and nutmeg brown for their belts, sheaths, and the backpack of the second soldier. Next was a timeless gray for their boots, helmets, gloves, and the inside of their shields. And for the final touch, I used bright red for their armor and the symbol on their shields. They both had a pouch on their belts that I made blue but forgot to add it in. I wasn't too fond of the bases on these figurines, so against my better judgment, I decided to cut them down. So I grabbed my goggles, my respirator, and my rotary tool and got to hacking. 
I mostly wanted to cut somewhat close to their feet with the cutting tool because I didn't want to risk cutting something that I didn't want to cut. Once I got it to the point where I wasn't comfortable moving forward, I switched to a sanding tool and used it to slowly whittle down the rest of the plastic around the feet. I didn't get everything, but again, I didn't want to risk messing anything up. Next, I gave the structure a coat of black primer spray paint and used my airbrush to give the whole thing a coat of burnt umber. Then I mixed beachcomber beige with yellow oxide to make a sandy yellow color and I used a large makeup brush to paint over all the walls in the ground. Once that was dry, I used the same brush to give the whole thing a light coat of antique parchment. The next thing I wanted to add was some bushes that I made myself with twine. To be honest with you, I messed up how I was supposed to make these, but I was still able to get some to work out. I took a couple pieces of twine and unraveled them into the individual pieces and then used each strand as a bush and twisted them around to give them more definition. Then I glued them down in my pretty terrible setup, which ended up not working anyways, so I had to improvise and just stand them up and hope that they didn't fall over. Fortunately, about six of them worked out and that was plenty, so I trimmed them down to the sizes and shapes I wanted. Then it was a matter of finding where I wanted them to go and adding some glue to hold them down. Once I had them glued in place, to try and hide the bottoms, I used some yellow flocking that I made from sawdust to try and give it the look of a bush that's lost its leaves or grass that's turned yellow from the heat. Now I want to make some torches to go on either side of the door, so I cut the ends off of two skewers for the torches and two pieces from a cocktail stick and sanded them down. I used regular glue to hold them at first, but I ended up using hot glue later because it was too brittle and I ended up breaking both of them when trying to paint them. While those were drying, I moved on to the next piece that I wanted in the scene. In the diorama, there's a small hallway that I built and I wanted to sort of simulate a booby trapped area. So I'm using some pieces of the skewer from earlier and a piece of foam to have the look of a moving platform filled with spikes that I cut from toothpicks cocktail sticks, and a couple more skewers. I cut the pointed pieces off in the lengths that I wanted and used a wire brush to carve some rough lines into the foam to make it look like wood. Then I used regular glue for the spikes and the poles on the back, but I ended up having to use hot glue on the poles later because they didn't want to stay on. Once the glue was dry, I gave the whole thing a coat of burnt umber, and then I gave what was left of the bases of each mini a similar paint job as the walls and floor of the labyrinth. To wrap up the painting process, I took some burnt umber and used it to paint the door, the stairs, and the torches for the wall before gluing them into place. Then I used silver to paint the handle of the door and the metal bands on the top and bottom of the door. And lastly, I used black to paint all of the rivets in the metal. Now that everything was painted, it was time to add a wash. I took a mix of burnt sienna, black, and yellow oil paints and diluted them with thinner until it was a runny consistency. I decided to test out the wash on the wooden board to see how it was going to look because I was skeptical at first. Unfortunately it was brown so it wasn't easy to judge from this so I had to take my chances with the main structure. I started with the back because I figured if it didn't look right in a small spot on the back I could fix it and cover it up later. But I didn't need to in the end. I thought it looked great so I proceeded to add it to the whole thing. Painting on a little and using a paper towel immediately afterwards to soak up any excess that's left over. I mostly wanted the wash to rest in recesses of the stones to give them more definition. As the wash goes on, you can see how big of a difference it makes. It took the bright stones and mellowed them out and gave them a worn look. I took the same wash and gave all of the minis a light coat as well making sure to repeat the earlier process and use a paper towel to soak up the excess. The end result is clothing that looks worn, skin that looks dirty, and metal that looks aged from battle. And now we move on to the final step of the whole process. Using a hot glue gun, I added glue to the trap and placed it in its spot on the wall. 
Next, I place the chests in their spots. And lastly, the monstrous Minotaur and the unlucky soldiers who stumbled upon this labyrinth to find him inside. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch me make my first diorama. I hope you all enjoy the video and come back to join me in the next one. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you can see when all my future videos come out. Thank you all for watching. My name is Corndog and see you all in the next video.